Welcome back to part three of our lecture about mitosis and cell division. Last time, we talked about the different phases of a cell cycle, the different names we have for the different parts of its life cycle. So let's review really quick. Now, in the first picture, we have interphase. And you can tell it's interphase because when we look at the cell, the nucleus is separated out from everything else, and we can't see any DNA. It's all loose, so we just see kind of a purple mush in there. The second one is prophase. And we know the second picture is prophase because while we still have a nucleus, there's a clear area where the DNA shows up, it's starting to condense into threads or little clumps. Remember, those are what we call chromosomes, DNA, when it coils up. And if we look at the corresponding diagram, we can see that the nuclear envelope has got holes in it where it's starting to break apart to let the DNA out. And we have spindle fibers forming. Those are those great looking lines pointing towards the two poles of the cell right there. Also, now the DNA has coiled up, condensed into chromosomes, which we can see a lot more easily. The third picture is metaphase. And the way we know it's metaphase is we have extensive spindle fibers all over the place, but mainly because the DNA, the chromosomes, have now lined up in the middle, and that's what happens in metaphase. Remember, metaphase only takes a few minutes, just the lining up of the chromosomes. Go down to the next picture, and we see anaphase. And we can tell that it's anaphase the same way as we tell, told prophase and metaphase by looking at the DNA, seeing what the chromosomes are doing right now. The chromosomes on either side have now split, so the sister chromatids are no longer connected together. And you can just see the same thing happening over here in our picture. They're separated out from each other. And they're starting to move towards the two different poles, the two different sides of the cell. They're being pulled there by those spindle fibers. And finally, in the last drawing, we have telophase. And we can see that it's telophase, again, like all the others, by looking at the DNA and looking at the shapes of the stuff we see in there. So if we look in our picture, we can see that the DNA is now in two separate clumps on either side. And it's becoming more spread out. We don't see nice distinct threads like we do in some of the pictures. Instead, the DNA here looks more like our DNA up at the beginning. It's just this kind of reddish purplish cloud. And that's because it's relaxed. It's unwound into a bunch of little threads. Another thing that we can see in this picture, and I'll erase this so we can see a little more easily, is we can see the beginning of a cell plate forming. Now this is a plant cell, so the cell plate forms by making a membrane that divides up our two daughter cells. We can see it here in these dotted yellow lines here, next to my, the line I've drawn. And after that membrane forms, then the cell wall will come along next to it. Now what's not shown in this picture is cytokinesis, that's right. Where it's not shown is the actual act of division. So this goes right up until the beginning of division and then stops. It doesn't show us everything. Just as a reminder, interphase. This is where the cell spends most of its time. This is the longest of all of the different... This is the longest part, sorry, as I was saying, of the cell's life cycle, longest phase. And here it's just a normal cell. It's not doing anything particularly fancy, just carrying out its jobs. Now, prophase is the beginning of mitosis. Here, mitosis gets started, and the cell begins to prepare to divide. So things like the nuclear envelope coming apart happen at this space. Next, we have metaphase. And in metaphase, we have the lining up of the DNA of the chromosomes along the center. We can see that line in both the photograph and the diagram. In anaphase, that same line begins to split. And as it splits, those chromatids, the sister chromatids of the pairs, begin to separate. They go to the two different poles. And our last phase is telophase. In many ways, telophase is cleaning up after the mitosis process. The nuclear envelope gets reformed, the spindle fibers come apart, the DNA relaxes and goes from chromosomes back to chromatin, and everything goes back to a normal cell to start over 
at interphase while it begins to mature. Now, cell division is a very important thing that our body does, so their body has to have lots of different ways to control cell division. So there are three main variables we're going to talk about for how the body controls when and if, that was strange, hold on, controls when and if the cell begins to divide. First, whether or not a cell has anchorage. Now, this is just for animal cells, so notice that. We're not talking about plants or funguses or bacteria or anything else here. But animal cells must be in contact with a solid surface to divide. So no free-flowing cell. Cell just la-di-da, floating around in the blood. It's never going to divide. It's got to be touching something solid. Cell density. If cells are crowded, then they stop dividing. And that makes sense because the cells are crowded and there's no room all around those cells to grow. If they divide, we're just filling up the crowd. And a bunch of unorganized cells, well, that's trouble. If cells are organized where they're supposed to be, the body works. But when too many cells start piling on top of each other with no particular organization, we get cancer cells. Cancer is just when cells divide without paying any attention to how they're supposed to divide and not doing the job they're supposed to do. They pile up on top of each other in an unorganized manner, not listening to the instructions sent by the body. Now, the way those instructions are sent is using something called chemical growth factors. Bam, right there. Chemical growth factors are the signals that our body sends to stimulate, to start the process of, cells dividing. They can also stop it. Another name for these chemical growth factors is cyclins, C-Y-C-L-I-N-S, because they're part of the cell cycle. So the cyclins control the cell cycle. Now if the cyclins are working properly, check that off, then we get no cancer. But if the cyclins are ever interrupted, there's other wrong signals being sent, or if there's a mutation, or for a variety of other more complicated reasons, then we get malfunctions of multiplication, what's known as cancer. So here we have some great cell diagrams. Let's take a look at them. Get a color that will show up here. Which phase do you think this cell is in? Well... If we take a look at it, the nucleus is all in one piece. The DNA is not divided into individual lines. It's just kind of a blob. So that's right, I'm going to call it, this is interphase. This is not part of mitosis at all. The cell is just living its life. How about this one? What part of the cell cycle is this? Well, we take a look at it, same thing, following the same logic, we look at the DNA. The DNA is in little bands, and it's kind of lined up along a center line right there. So, when the DNA is lined up, we've got a name for that. It is metaphase. So these are obviously not in order, they're scrambled. How about this one? Let's take a look at that one. Okay, now you've had a chance to think about it. We look at the DNA. It's divided into two clumps. We can still see a few of the strands of DNA there, but not as well. And we see the beginning of a little line forming right there. It's not as dark as the rest of these. That's because it's a membrane. It doesn't have a wall yet. So if we think about the place where it starts to divide into two cells, we can tell that this is telophase. All right, how about this one? Think about what the DNA looks like. Think about our phases. That's right, this one is prophase, because we can see the DNA, but it's still bundled in the middle like a nucleus. The nucleus is still there. We can see bits of green peeking through as it starts to come apart. And finally, last but not least, what phase do we think this is? 
Well, if we look at the DNA, because remember, that's the, that's the trick here, we see that it's divided into dense chromosomes. We can see the lines. And those lines are being pulled towards the two separate sides over here. So we know that this is anaphase. Anaphase is the only phase where the chromosomes get pulled to opposite poles of the cell. We've got our eye, which is not mitosis. It's interphase. And then our PM. A and T, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Here's a diagram showing how this works. Just like we talked about, describing prophase. Now, prometaphase, that's an advanced version, which is basically the tiny phase in between prophase and metaphase. So don't worry about that. We've got metaphase lining up along the middle. Anaphase, where they separate. Telophase, where we start to break apart but don't quite finish our way up, and then all of a sudden we get that, that dividing line called cytokinesis. That's where cytokinesis comes in, at the division between the two daughter cells, separating them out so they can start their new interface. Here's some pictures of this happening in real life. If we look, we can see the red spindle fibers and the blue DNA. This would be our prophase because if we look at it, the DNA is in the middle and the spindle fibers are forming, but we can't see a nucleus, so it must have come apart already. Here we've got metaphase because we're lining up in the middle, and that's what metaphase does. Here we have anaphase, the two sides being pulled apart, and Telophase. We have two almost complete cells, but they haven't actually separated all the way yet. The way you can tell they haven't separated all the way yet is here in the middle, we still have this little pinching together known as the cleavage furrow. And that's going to be there until cytokinesis comes and chops those apart. Take a look at this. Think what this is. To me, this looks an awful lot like metaphase. It's not as pretty as some of our others, so because we're taking pictures of the real thing, sometimes it'll be sloppy. We have more or less a line kind of down the middle right here, and we got some spindle fibers attached to it. How about this one? If you answered anaphase, you're absolutely right. Because in anaphase, the sister chromatids get separated from each other and pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. Here's a bunch of other cells. We can see several cells in interphase. Bam, 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 all over the place, where their nucleus looks just fine and they don't have any particularly visible DNA. It's kind of light. We can also see an awful lot of prophase. Places where there is a nucleus, but you're starting to see the DNA. So if we look for our prophase, we can see a good one right here. See how it's starting to see those little stripes show up in there? Got another good-looking prophase. Let's see here. Right about there. You'll notice there's a whole lot more of them in interphase than any of the other parts of the mitotic phase, and that's because interphase is most of a cell's life, remember? Here's two metaphases. See how they're lining up in a little line there? We find an anaphase where they're being pulled apart. Now, I don't see any anaphases on here. You could maybe argue that this one is the end of anaphase rather than the beginning of telophase because they still kind of look like they're being pulled. But anaphase takes just so, so short, hardly takes any time at all. So it's hard to picture on some of these. And finally, telophase, where we're, we're rebuilding the particular cell. Here's one we've separated into two bunches of DNA. Here's one as well. We even have a few examples of cytokinesis in here. So here we have two daughter cells from one original cell. There's our cell plate that's formed. We just finished telophase. You can still see the chromosomes a little bit in these two nuclei, and they're about to come apart from each other. 
take a look at this. Here's that same thing, telophase. This line is kind of wavy and blocky and chunky, not as straight and solid down as these lines are over here. And that's because it's still just a cell plate. The membrane is formed, the cell wall hasn't formed yet. So this is definitely telophase. And that's it for this section. Congratulations on finishing up number three. Go back to the beginning if you want to practice these. Really what we need to know is how to identify pictures based on what the DNA is doing in the cell at that time.